All right, so today I attempted a problem that asked about the volume of a cone, and unfortunately, I did not remember what the volume of a cone was. But on another level, I, ha I got to derive it, and I figured it out. So a cone reminds me of two shapes, okay? First one is a triangle. The second shape it reminds me of is a circle. And if you look at this base right here, it's a circular base. So it reminds me of a triangle with a circle on its base. And if you take that triangle, sort of like I did, and you wrap it around like that, where you have the area of a triangle here, and you take it and you wrap it around a bunch of times, or actually, no, you wrap it around in one circular motion, right? You should fill in a conic section here. You should fill in, make a cone, right? And here would be a circular base, and it would look, you know, something like what I have drawn over there, okay? So that was, that was my attempt. I was to say, okay, well, how can, I, how can I do that? The only way I know how to do that is to do, some, do, some, do an integral over, uh, over a triangle. And, well, I pictured here that this circle at the bottom has a radius. So I'm going to say this is its radius right here. I'm going to call that R. And then I'm going to say, okay, this, this cyan color here is, is the center point of the cone. It goes to its height. So I'm going to call that, that part, that, that distance h, right? Makes sense. And then I am going to connect these two points. And right? I'm going to say, okay, now if I take that triangle, right, and that, that area, specifically that area of that triangle, if I take that area of that triangle and I spin it around this axis like this, and that, that area, just to review, if I have a line and I push that line over a certain distance, Let's call it the same distance, right? It's going to cover all this distance, and it's going to be squared. It's going to turn into a square or some sort of shape. Well, the same kind of thing happens with three-dimensional objects. If I take this square and I push it that way, right, then it covers a distance that kind of looks like this. And this is what you might recognize as a cube. And it's, as it goes along, it cover, colors in the distance, and that it becomes a volume thing. So I'm taking a 2D object and I'm turning it into 3D by rotating it around the axis. The only thing I need to know is the area of a circle formula, right? Which is pi r squared. Now my question is, well, in order to integrate I need to know the function of this line, right? I need to know what this is. So how do I do that? Well, I got a couple I got a couple things here. I got this point right here and I got this point right here. And I know that this point is well, this is the origin. Let's just call that O. If that's O, that point is 0 R. Right? That's that point right there. And if this again, if that's the origin, this point is H0. And I can use that to find the the equation of the line. And the equation of the line, well, I, is this format that you might be familiar with, right? And what's m? Well, m is the slope, which is defined as the change in y over change in x. And what's my change in y? Well, it is the second y, which is 0, right? has no height, minus the first y, which is r, divided by the second x, which is h, minus the first x, which is 0, which simplifies to negative r over h. So that's the M part of this formula, okay? And what's the B part? Well, the B is where this line crosses the Y axis. This would be the Y axis or the functions axis. And that's just that R. So the equation of the line rewritten is Y equals negative R over H times X. Now let me do that in a little different color. Times X. I'm doing my, all my X's in this color. Um, let me go back. Plus R. 